Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, it's Stephanie. Today I'm sharing a highly requested video on how to use SketchUp. I personally use SketchUp Pro because it has a few more advanced features, but the free web version of SketchUp is a great place to start. And to be honest, you may find that you never need the features of the Pro version. Today I'll be demonstrating with the free web version of SketchUp. I want to preface this by saying I am not a SketchUp Pro. I know the very basics, but I do use these tools often. So I'm gonna show you guys how I use SketchUp and hopefully break it down in a way that makes sense for you if you're just starting out. I use SketchUp to design all of my woodworking projects and to also design other custom built-ins in our house. It's an incredibly useful tool once you learn how to use it. It's not only helpful to visualize what the end product is going to look like, but also to determine exact measurements so that you can come up with an accurate material and cut list for your projects. I recently designed and built these cedar planter boxes, so I'm going to walk you through all the tools and show you step by step how I designed these in the free version of SketchUp. I have another SketchUp tutorial where I walk you through designing our custom pantry, so I'll link that video in the description below in case you're interested. There are probably some more efficient ways to get to the end result here, so if you're more experienced and have any tips for us, help us out and leave some comments below. SketchUp for Web is a free version of SketchUp that runs in a web browser. To start using SketchUp for Web, you need to have a Trimble ID or Google account, an internet connection, a desktop or laptop computer, and an up-to-date web browser like Chrome, Firefox, or Microsoft Edge. When you create an account or sign in, you'll see this home screen. We're going to create a new model. Here you can change the model's units of measure. I always use fractional inches, so let's create a new model in fractional inches. Now that we have a new model open, let's take a quick tour. I'm going to quickly rename the model here. At the top left, we have the main menu bar, a place to name your model, share button to share your plan, an undo and redo button, and the save status of your model. The main toolbar on the left here contains the basic tools that you need to get started. This is a search tool where you can search the SketchUp command list for specific tools or commands. Next, we have the select tool to select entities, the eraser tool to remove lines, faces, or other entities, the line tool to draw straight lines and create different shapes, this rectangle tool to create basic rectangles and squares. The push-pull tool drags a face in 3D space so it expands or disappears. Move can move, copy, or stretch entities. Rotate moves entities at a specific angle. Scale resizes entities. Paint bucket applies the active material to faces. Orbit enables you to fly around a 3D model. Pan moves your view up and down, left or right. And tape measure measures entities and helps you model precisely. Under the divider is your most recent tool. And if you click here, you have the expanded tool set home to all other SketchUp tools, none of which I will use in this tutorial. Down here is the status bar where you can find the help center and more resources, the language menu, input device selector, I recommend using a mouse. I won't go into this panel on the right too much. I will briefly touch on the outliner, 3D warehouse, materials, and tags. Down here on the bottom right is the measurement box. We're going to use this to input specific measurements. One last thing to mention is that you can use the scroll feature on your mouse to zoom in and out. All right, now that we have an idea of all the tools available, let's start modeling. Like I mentioned, I recently built these cedar planter boxes, so I'm going to show you how I designed them here in SketchUp. Keep in mind, if you're using lumber for a woodworking project, make sure to use the actual size of the lumber and not the nominal size. So for example, a four by four is not actually four inches by four inches, it's three and a half inches by three and a half inches. I'm going to remove Ty here just because he's going to get in the way. Let's begin by creating one of the legs for the planter. I'm using the rectangle tool to draw a square. I'm going to click in the intersection here, drag out my mouse somewhere close, click, and then before clicking anywhere else, I'm going to type in my exact dimensions, three and a half, comma, three and a half. You can see the dimensions in the bottom right corner, then press enter. You can type in fractions, decimals, whatever SketchUp will recognize it. We have the length and width of the leg. Now we need to add the height. 
The height is going to be 32 inches, so I'm going to select the push pull tool, click on the face of the square, drag my mouse up, click somewhere close, type in 32 inches, then press enter. Before creating a new object, we need to group these entities together into a group or component. To do so, triple click the object, right click and select make component or make group. I like to make component and name it so that I know exactly what the object is. Let's name it leg number one. If you don't group your object and you try to move it, then you will only end up moving the individual face or line that you click on. Objects will end up sticking together and it's a huge mess. So always remember to make components and name them to stay organized. We have one leg. Now let's create some of the two by four framing members. I want the two by four framing to be inset from the outside of the leg about one inch. So to measure that, I'm going to take my tape measure, click on the outside of the leg, bring it in at one inch, or just like before, you can type in the exact measurement you want and press enter. This line will be a guide for where the two by fours are going to sit. Next, I'm taking my rectangle tool, starting at this intersection, click and drag it out about two inches by four inches, click again, and then I'm going to type in one and a half inches by three and a half inches, enter, this framing piece is 12 inches long, so let's take the push-pull tool and pull it out to 12 inches. This piece is finished, so let's triple click, right click, make component, and name it short framing number one. I need to make an additional framing piece on this leg. It'll be the same exact dimensions as the other framing piece, so I'm going to select it, press Command C to copy, and Command V to paste. I find it works best to place the object directly over the previous one, grab the corner that you want to move, and click it to the corner that you want to move it to. It's easiest to move objects directly on the axis lines. You'll see the blue, green, or red lines depending on which axis you're moving along. I want this piece to be six inches below the top framing piece, so to measure that, I'm going to take the tape measure, click the bottom of the framing piece, and measure down six inches. Now I have a guideline at six inches. Let's make sure this object is selected. Grab the move tool, Click on the corner of it and drag it down till it hits that intersection. You can keep these guidelines or get rid of them. You just click on the line and press delete. Next, I want to copy and paste this leg on the other side of these framing pieces. So I'm going to select the object, Command C, Command V, drag it over. Like before, I'm going to bring the object down directly over the original object and then drag it over from the endpoint. Okay, so here is one section of framing. Next, let's work on the longer section of framing. I'm going to follow the same step, so let's take the tape measure, measure in one inch for a reference point, take the rectangle tool, start at the intersection, and drag it out about two inches by four inches. Type in the exact measurement, one and a half inches by three and a half inches. Now I'm going to take the push-pull tool and drag this out 36 inches. Click anywhere and then I'm going to type in 36 inches, enter. This is a new object, so let's make it a component. Triple click, right click, make component, and then let's name this long framing number one. Same thing, we're going to copy and paste this object six inches below the top one. So let's take the tape measure, measure down six inches, and then let's take the top one copy and paste it, and drag it down from the end point. I always suggest copying and pasting from a corner point and then dragging the object down the access to a specific intersection or point. Now that we have the two long framing pieces, I'm going to delete these guidelines and then I need to copy and paste another leg. I have half the framing complete, now I'm going to speed it up and copy and paste the objects to get the other side of the framing. We can delete all of these measurement guidelines and now we have the framing of the planter complete. Before we move on, I'm excited to share the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes ranging all sorts of topics. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, video editing, illustration, but Skillshare has hundreds of career focused classes too. This year, I've been really trying to make more time for the things that fulfill me by improving my productivity and time management. So I started using this software called Notion to organize my life and my work, and I was so 
excited to find that Skillshare had over 100 classes relating to Notion. I ended up taking Ali Abdal's Notion Masterclass on maximizing productivity and organization. I learned tons of new features on Notion that I didn't know existed, and it's really allowed me to leverage the software to create a system that maximizes my productivity and organization. Whether you're interested in learning how to watercolor, how to create your dream career, or anything in between, no goal is too small. It's never too late to reinvent your goals and yourself, so check out my Skillshare link below. The first 1,000 people to use that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Let's go on the right panel over here and select Outliner. Here you can view every single object that you've made and you can click on this little eye here if you want to view it or hide it. Another panel I want to point out is the tags here. I like to create different tags for different groups of objects. So let's create a new tag for the legs and let's create a tag for the framing. To tag each object, right click the object and select Entity Info and where you see Current Tag, click on that and select which tag you would like it to be tagged under. I'm going to go around and do that for all of the legs and for the framing pieces. Now we can show or hide entire groups of objects. So we can hide all of the legs at once or we can hide all of the framing at once. This is really helpful when you're breaking down projects step by step and only want to show certain steps or materials at a time. Next, let's add the one by eight cedar boards to the outside of the planter. I'm going to take my rectangle tool and create a one by eight, which is actually three quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to pull this board all the way out to 36 inches. Triple click right click make component and this is going to be named long cedar board. I'm going to copy and paste this board right underneath, drag it down the blue axis and I'm just going to leave a tiny gap in between these boards. I'm going to create the same boards on the other short side so let's zoom in here, rectangle tool, start at the intersection, drag it down to three quarters of an inch by seven and a quarter inch, and then pull this out 12 inches. Let's make this a component, so triple click, right click, make component, and then this is going to be short cedar board. Then we'll copy and paste this board underneath. I'm going to fast forward and follow the same steps for the remaining cedar boards. Now let's make sure all the cedar boards are under the same tag. So let's go over here to tags, create a new tag for cedar boards, and then tag each of the individual cedar boards. Now we're going to work on the bottom of the planter. Here I'll have one by eight cedar boards sitting across the bottom of the planter for the plants to sit on. These don't have to be perfect, so I'm going to take the rectangle tool drag this out seven and a quarter inch by 15 inches and raise it up to three quarters of an inch. We have our first bottom board that we're going to then copy and paste, but let's make sure this is a component first. We have the bottom boards finished, so now let's add that as a tag. Last, we need to add the trim at the top of the planter. This is going to be made out of one by four cedar, so let's grab the rectangle tool, click corner to corner, and then out three and a half inches. We'll take the push pull tool and pull up three quarters of an inch, and that is one trim piece triple click, right click, make component, and we'll name this short trim piece. Let's copy and paste the trim piece to the other side.
Now we just have the last trim piece to make. Take the rectangle tool, let's start in this corner of the trim, drag it all the way down till it hits this point, 36 inches by three and a half inches, and then let's pull that up three quarters of an inch. There's our long trim piece, so let's copy that piece and paste it. Drag it all the way out to this corner. We'll make a tag for the trim pieces, so open up the entity info, add cedar trim, and then tag all of those trim pieces. Now that we have the planter built, let's add some final touches. I want to paint all of the material so it looks like wood, so let's go over to the paint bucket and find some wood material. They have a bunch of different materials to choose from. We're going to go down to wood here, select this, and paint all of the objects. The planter is painted. Now let's go and find some plants to put in the planter. For this, I'm going to go into the 3D warehouse and type in plants. You can search for all types of objects. They have tons of items already populated in here. Let's scroll down to find some fun plants to add. I think this grass looks nice. Let's download it into the model. We're going to have to make it a little bit smaller. Take the scale tool to resize it and move it up into the planter. That concludes the SketchUp tutorial. I hope you guys found this helpful and learned a thing or two. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.